Hello, this is Steve Sanangelo from the SRS Rock Report with a new YouTube video. The major battle in the silver market has begun. Uh, control of the silver metal will lead to much higher prices. And it's been a while since I've done a YouTube video, public video, but I, um, I want to put some information in some of my subscriber uh, videos and, and update what's happening. And it's important that in, uh, precious metal investors understand this dynamic because it is the control of, of metal in the market that's going to lead to much higher prices. Now, why is that? Well, many of you probably have seen that there's a lot of silver leaving the LBMA inventories. Uh, some of that's coming off of the ETFs, but it's also leaving London. It's going to, uh, a lot of it's going to uh, India. They're buying a lot of silver now, taking advantage of the low price. Uh, it's going to China, it's going to Canada, even the United States. So we're seeing this, this drain of silver out of the LBMA, and I'm going to show why it's important. And we're not seeing the same thing with gold, as you can see the gold inventories, because most of the silver in the world has been held that we know about it is held in LBMA, not on the COMEX or not on the uh, Shanghai Futures Exchange. So it all, you know, if you follow my work, it all comes back to the energy. And, uh, you know, uh, a few years ago, there was Jerome Corsi and Lindsey Williams were making the alt media a circuit. And they were putting out the energy non-crisis and, and black gold stranglehold. And I believe Jerome Corsi continues to put out the conspiracy that there is no crisis with oil. Well, we're seeing that crisis now, and it's it's just going to get worse. And I talk about that in the uh, the world is heading for the energy cliff. This is not anything that we can prepare, we can uh, stop. Uh, there's it's the falling energy return on investment. And so it's not a matter of investment to get more oil. We, we, can't, we, we can't really use a lot of this oil that's remaining because it would totally collapse our economy. And if we understand that, uh, this is the reason why we need to be in the precious metals. So this is the energy cliff. Uh, there's many aspects that we're going to uh, see, but uh, a large part of that is that we've used up the easier oil and even though we, we go down kind of this peak production, uh, the, the energy that we could use really falls. And so this is the reason why we have the, uh, the energy cliff. Now, as I mentioned, uh, since the global financial crisis, the world has added about 12.6 million barrels a day. That was as of the peak, 2018, 2019. And most of that, 82% of it came from the United States. So what happens in the United States is very important to understand. And the blue is U.S., red's Canada. This is the rest of the world here. So uh, this is where most of the growth came from. We can thank you, the U.S. shale industry. The problem with the U.S. shale industry, and this is the four major oil fields, the Bakken, the DJ, Niobrara, the Permium, and Eagle Fort, uh, the decline rate is between 48, 45, and 48% a year, every year. You, and so we see uh, in 2019, and this is if we don't add any new production, just the natural decline rate, uh, it falls in just one year down to 4.04 million barrels a day, down from 7.76. So we lost about 3.6, 3 3.7 million barrels gone. And we've got to replace that just to keep production uh, at the same level. And it's going to become very difficult to do that. And I explained this to my subscribers. And I explained this in a uh, uh, silver update for subscribers, the sinking back in oil ship production heading in the wrong way. Forecast of production growth is now turning into decline. People need to understand this information uh, because uh, the, I think the shale industry is going to be in serious trouble. We're going to see a collapse of U.S. shale production by 2030. And that's not good for the United States. It's not good for the U.S. dollar. But that's the reason why, again, our precious metals will store uh, this wealth in this kind of scenario. Now, this is what's important to understand. The people who are, let's say, against peak oil, they think it's a conspiracy. Well, you, you cannot fake these numbers. Folks, these are, the, these are the real numbers. 1965, the world was producing 31.8 million barrels a day. And the natural decline rate, because these fields decline, was about 1.3 million barrels a day. And as time went on, by 1990, 
we uh, doubled it to 65 million barrels a day. But unfortunately, now by increasing it, our decline rate has gone up to 4.5 million barrels a day. And according to my estimates, in 2019, we produced nearly 95 million barrels of oil a day. The decline rate now is 10 and a half million barrels a day. That means we have to find two Saudi Arabia Gore fields, which produced 5 million barrels a day at the peak. We need to find two of those every year, or we have to replace basically all of Russia before Russia started to decline in production after the uh, Ukraine-Russian war. So we got to find either two Gore fields, the biggest field in the world, or we got to replace Russia every year from this year onward. And if people think that we could do that, we can't. And that's why we're going to hit the energy cliff. And so this is, this is what you, people need to realize. With the world now losing 10 million barrels a day of production, we need to find two Gawar oil fields or one, or one Russia every year. And this is what's missing from the analysis of we just need more investment. It's, it's impossible to find 10 million barrels a day every year. It's impossible. And we've done that. But now this is the reason why we're hitting this energy cliff and we're seeing the energy crisis happening in the world, especially starting to take place first in Europe. Now, when we understand that energy drives a global economy, financial markets steer the economy, then gold and silver are stores of energy value. And this is my analysis. And this, it's no different today than it was 200 years ago, 1,000 years ago, or during the ancient Roman Empire. They used wood fuel. We're talking massive amount of wood to make charcoal, to smelt metals, gold, silver, lead, uh, iron, uh, copper, and then all the wood they needed for construction and their empire and shipbuilding. And so I, I estimate they cut down a billion trees in a 50-year period at the peak of the Roman Empire. So if you watch the movie Gladiator and you see in that, in that movie, in the, the famous battle in the beginning, that they're, they're fighting the Germanic tribes in these big forests. Why do you think they're fighting the Germanic, uh, Germanic tribes in these forests? Because they need the wood. So this is the understanding. Gold and silver are money and have been money for 2,500 years because they store energy value. Why? Energy drives the economy. Simple as that. And so this is a chart. I just updated it today. Total world debt, 1960 to 2020 is propped up only by global oil production growth. And so we've had, as I showed you, we've had oil production growth, but now we've hit the peak and total world debt has been able to increase due to the increase of global oil production. As global oil production declines, the ability to service debt will pop the debt bubble. I mean, look at this. Look how much uh, the, according to the analysis I've seen on from the Institute of uh, finance, the International Institute of Finance, global debt was 149 trillion right before the financial crisis. And now it's 303. We doubled the debt since the financial crisis. And what is that being done? That's, that's being done to offset the falling energy return on investment of oil. And so a lot of this debt has come from the United States because the United States is the major driver of, of world economy especially with all this oil we brought on from shale, which a lot of it was used by debt. So U.S. debt has gone up from $9.5 trillion in the second quarter of 2008 to $30.6 trillion quarter to 2022. That's $21, that's $21 trillion, $21 trillion in just 14 years. But it looks more ominous. Well, first of all, it's, it's much higher now. That was as of the second quarter. According to uh, uh, the U.S. Treasury, we've got now 30.9 trillion, 30.9 trillion. So we've grown another 300 billion since, uh, since the second quarter. And that's not even another quarter because it's the middle of September. And you see, this is bad news because this is the, the debt limit appears unlimited. The estimate we would reach 31.3 trillion in 2022. Well, if we go back here in September, we're at 30.9. We are only a 400 billion away from that. But the unfortunate thing to notice in this chart 
is the exponential trend line. The U.S. public debt is heading into the exponential function, the exponential trend line. And if you take this chart to any mathematician, any math professor, they'll tell you this is this is setting up for collapse. Nothing continues to go up in this in this in this manner. It collapses. So unfortunately, this is exactly where our debt is headed. And uh, this was the last. The one before the prior debt limit, which was, uh, I think, twenty-eight trillion. Now the debt limit now is slightly below thirty-one point four trillion. That limit is expected to cover federal borrowing needs until the early part of two thousand twenty-three. And so you can see that this chart is also heading in an exponential fashion because, as of this point in time in two thousand twenty-one, it was twenty-eight trillion. Now it's now, as we notice, it's 30.9 trillion here. So we're not too far away from the debt ceiling limit of 31.4, and they're going to have to raise it again. So uh, this is not sustainable, uh, this kind of debt, especially with rising interest rates. And I talked about this for the gold members, massive global economic Ponzi scheme uncovered the devils in the, in the energy and massive debt details, what people need to realize what a Ponzi scheme, why is the world in a financial Ponzi scheme, even the stocks, even real estate and bonds? It's because it, there isn't the energy there to pay for all of it. That's what it comes down to. It's all based on the energy. We've got way too many claims and we don't have the energy, especially when energy production declines, all those claims are gonna lose serious value. And again, this is why I continue to say it's very wise to own precious metals because they store very important energy value. Now, getting back to this, the, the big battle coming in the silver market, uh, while many precious metal investors have been trained by certain analysts in the precious metal community to look at the silver ETFs as bad, I look at it as an indicator. And so institutions go into these ETFs, even large net worth investors, because it's easier. Um, and when you see this kind of silver moving out of the LBMA, going to India and elsewhere, when institutions try to move back into silver after this, this, this deflationary wave that the central banks, the Fed and central banks are doing, they're going to they're gonna be, find it very hard to access silver because they mentioned, JP Morgan mentioned in their updated prospectus during the Wall Street silver squeeze, that if there's another huge demand for silver, they may not, may not be able to access that silver. So this is what I wanted to show you. Everyone in the precious metal community or many people continue to focus on the comics. The comics, the comics, the comics. The comics is nothing, folks. It's, it's nothing anymore. There's 44 million, 45 million ounces of silver in the registered comics. That's it. Uh, there's about 45 million in the Shanghai Futures Exchange and about 320 million, 340 million in the LBMA other. So this is what I want to show you. There is more silver now in the ETFs. Is it all accounted for? Is it all there? I don't know. But if we look at all the silver that's in these uh, public exchange, open, transparent holdings, if we, this is minus the spot. And um, the reason why I have excluded Sprott, because institutions, large hedge funds, large net worth investors, even retail, they use the ETFs to move in and move out. And they use mostly the GLD, the IAU, they use uh, the, the uh, ETF securities in, in Europe and London, and also the SLV. They do not move in and out of the Sprott funds. They tend to buy and hold. So this is, I wanted to show you, there's more silver held in the ETFs than there is in the LBMA other, because a lot of this silver that's in the LBMA is already accounted for in the ETFs. So there's almost twice as much silver held in the ETFs than you can get on, these, on the exchanges, basically, either in London, either in comics from the registered or the Shanghai. So what happens now, the price discovery is in the ETFs. So we, we need to be forgetting about the comics. It's becoming less, uh, it, 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 less of, of a worthwhile source for price discovery. Now, if we add the uh, Sprott 
PSLV and PHYS. It's almost a billion ounces of silver and held in the ETFs, ETNs, ETPs. It's, it's double. So we need to understand that the exchanges are becoming irrelevant. At, at some point in time, the exchanges will become less relevant. And it's, it's actually the, the price action and the, and the battle is going to take place in the ETFs or as institutions and high net worth individuals start buying silver, taking it off of the ETFs, taking it off of the exchanges and putting it in a private vault outside the system, which seems we seem, I think that is starting to happen now, especially in India. So we need to understand it's the ETF, it's the, the flows of metal in and out of the ETFs. And this is a gold ET flows, August, 2022. You don't have to be a brain surgeon to figure out that when metal flows out of the ETFs, the price comes down. When metal flows into the ETFs, especially during the Russian Ukraine war, metal flows in. So this is the price driver, not, fit, not physical bullion buying in time that what will likely be, but it's still, this is the mechanism that drives the price. And why is this important? Well, if we go back here and understand that this is where the silver is, it's not, there's not much silver here. When institutions try to access silver and we start seeing a doubling, a tripling of demand to protect wealth during the problems we're going to have with the debt, with more uh, money printing and QE, uh, and inflation, inflation and things we consume and deflation and things we own. This is where this is the battle is going to take place. It's going to be trying to move into silver, and there's just not that much silver there. And I don't think the, the, the market really understands how dynamic this is going to be. So I wanted to show you this. I do believe we're seeing silver hitting more towards a low now, I'm not saying it can't go lower. Why? Because in the past, I have noticed that silver tends to fall down to the cost of production, and that tends to be the floor. It will go below it. But we could see right now it is below the cost of production, which is about 20. Now, what this is based on the second quarter with oil prices much higher. If we continue to see lower oil prices down to the 70s or 60s, this can decline down to 19, 18 and a half. But that's really it. So it, it's no coincidence that we see this here. We see the silver hedges, the commercials, net short position. It's at a low. See here? It's at a low. It's bounced off. And if we go back here, when we see the commercial net short position at a low, and these are the, the bullion bank hedgers, the price tends to go up. And so this is much different than gold. Oh, before I get to gold, the dynamic that we're seeing in the silver market, it, you know, is similar to what I've meant, I mentioned about the Dutch TTF price and the, and the, and the problems they're having in Europe. Institutional buyers back in May 2020, when they shut down the um, uh, when the pandemic shut down, you, you couldn't give natural gas away. It was a dollar twenty four in Europe. Well, this is an older chart back in July. It went up to one hundred. It's now in, it's now sixty dollars. Can you imagine the Dutch traders now if they could get gas? Uh, they would die to pay dollar twenty four for it or a dollar fifty or two dollars. But now the price has gone up. So this is the same mentality that the institutions are doing now. They don't think they need silver because of what the Fed and central banks are doing. They're trying to push interest rates up to pull down energy, metal, inflation prices. So they're easing up on their exposure to the metals, but they shouldn't be doing that because why? All the debt I've shown you, the problems we're gonna have with energy, production is gonna to start to decline. And so, you do not, if you're an institution, you do not want to be going in and out of metal. You want to stay in that metal because you own it. To come back in the metal, you, it, you, you may start seeing, this is what I start to see in the future, really high prices because there's just not that much supply. But right now, institutions, large net worth investors, hedge funds, they're still playing business as usual, like the traders did with natural gas in Europe back in May, 2020. So this is the gold price. It's come down a little bit. 
but the cost of production is 1550 as of second quarter. It could be 1500. So gold is actually still above its cost of production compared to silver. And it's no coincidence because if you look at the COT report for the gold hedgers, this is the low here. They're not, they're not at a low. So it may be, I really think I've been telling subscribers at the SRS Rock Report that silver is likely going to hold up better because the bullion banks that do the commercial shorting, they are at a very, they're at a low. So they don't think this, the silver price is going to go down much lower. Why? Because the primary miners aren't making any money. But gold, it can go lower. So I think silver is going to hold up better on the short term. But on the mid to long term, this is what we're facing. This is the problem the world is facing. We're heading, the debt in the United States is heading into an exponential trend and it's going to collapse. And that's the reason why we own the metals. So I imagine next year, they're going to increase the debt limit. They're going to try to paper this over. But the, the, the larger they paper it over, the more they paper it over. And as energy production starts to decline, it's going to be impossible to prop this up. And I think we're going to have serious trouble with the, with the central banks trying to maintain business as usual in the next several years as the energy production starts to decline and the debt gets into serious trouble. So I believe the major battle in the silver market has just begun. This is not something that's going to happen overnight. It's just going to get stronger as time goes by. So if you have not yet subscribed to the SRS Rock Report YouTube channel, please consider do, doing so. And please check us out at the srsrockreport.com website. Thank you.